Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner Classic Let's Known Classic. This episode 2578 and double number 2472. Uh, first up, we have the final trade to ever discuss for now for Thunderbolts. We have New Thunderbolts, Volume 3, Ring of Power. Oh, excuse me, Right of Power. This collects, is, collects the final signatures on the series known as New Thunderbolts, issues 13, 18, and issue 100. And also contains the Tales of Marvel Universe, which is collected as part of the um, stuff related to issue 100. 13 to 15 is simply put a three-parter where Thunderbolts get into a public fight with New Avengers. Yep, seriously. And by the way, this very first issue cover is sort of a slight homage to... Uncanny X-Men number 100. Yep. <clears throat> That's mostly put exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. My only guess is the reason why that Marvel did this, at least Game of Seas did this, because, well, I'm sure at the time. Now, the whole arc for this one lasts for just for extra for two issues. I thought it was three, my mistake. And then, yeah, the whole thing with this is wraps up in just two issues. Mm -hmm. There's also a thing when these issues where Joystick is training with an older gentleman, and he ends up basically, while well, fighting with him, he ends up ruining her top. Yes, seriously. And then, pretty much in issue 15, we basically start a a fight with, of course, um, the new Squadron Sinister. Yep. They get reformed in this issue. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, basically, Famous Season brought back this group. Uh, first time in years. Uh, the last time they actually appeared was actually Avengers Annual Number Eight. Mm -hmm. That was released back in 1978, and this two-parter, this really good two-parter, was released in 2005. So almost 30 years later, we have returned of the Squadron of Sinister, which that this is basically a two-parter for a future story arc. Yep, we have a new Hyperion appearing in this issue. His name is Zob Rand, and he has sort of a more of a not red and gold, more like goldish gold. Yes, and he himself is only around for just a handful of issues. Yeah, pretty much after this two party appears in the Guardian Protocol store, well, the Civil War one tie in and stuff related to the Guardian Protocols. And that was simply it for him. So after this two parter where Thunderbolts basically take out the new squadron sinister. Where Speed Demon leaves me join the team. And of course, basically, Nighthawk joins Thunderbolts. Basically, 17 brings about the return of Baron Zemo to the team. Yep. We also see the, the return of Blackout in these issues. Yes. And we also see the Swordsman freeing his father from prison related to Hydra. Yes, and simply put, 1718 is a two-part, is basically a three-part storyline. Well, these two issues conclude issue 100. We have Zemo fighting, of course, the swordsman. Of course, Zemo is blamed for killing his sister, because of course he did. And this leads to a fight with Genville. Yes, Genville, the son of the original Captain Marvel. And in issue 100 for the series, Zemo kills him and shatters his remains all over the universe. Yeah, he gets killed off issue 100. And I'm thinking, really? For the 100th issue, they kill off, well, Photon. Yeah, he gets killed off in this issue. And we also see Mach 4, Fixer, Blizzard, Swords, uh, those three rejoin the team. Smuggler joins team 2. Well, this actually, of course, is a new Smuggler. Yeah, this is a new character who make, who actually had previously appeared in the book. Yes, this is actually a second smuggler because Eric Johnson was the real smuggler. And also in this story, he of course his character would appear a little bit after this. He would continue to appear up until 109, appear one off after this, and that was it for the character. Yeah, and also uh, Man Killer is joining the team, joining uh, turning against the team. And she also goes giant size, and she also leaves the Ross at this point. Yeah, because 
after this, these issues wrap up here for her, for her, she next appears in three issues of Avengers Initiative. By the way, oh, in case you're curious, though, this issue from the Vaults came out in 2006. I was reading comics at this point in time. So, basically, in the way this came out just prior to the events of Civil War One, So, one broke out, like, gnawing after this. When she appeared in issue 31, that was the first time she appeared in three years. Yep. Three years that she appeared in the book. And she appeared in those three issues. Two issues of Amazing X-Men. Uh, and then she popped up in Thunderbolt. And then her most recent appearance was in Venom Lethal Pether, Volume 2, Number 5. Of course, this was actually came out after the character died in Jim Zeb's run for the book. But this one overall was really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm going to give this trade here a 10 out of 10. Now, this kind of in a way is the end of Fabian the Caesar's time with the book. You know, thinking, really? Yes, really. Yeah, this would be his last book that he would do for Thunderbolts. Yeah, because he would leave, I think he would leave the company long after this. Yes, he actually would leave the company long after this is run wrapped up. Yeah, because I think 100 was his last history he worked on. Let me take a look and see about this. Let's see. Because I think 109 was his last issue. Yeah, I think 109 was his last official issue. And that was part of the Guardian Protocol story arc. Yep. Because I think pretty much right after that, he pretty much left the company. Yeah, he did. Yep. Pretty much in the way, this is also the end of the New Thunderbolts era. Yep. The end of New Thunderbolts. Yeah, New Thunderbolts were just basically these 18 issues and issues 100 and 109 of Thunderbolts. And that was it. No, seriously. That's it. Of course, this, of course, basically is a way to... My guess is the Guardian Protocol Stork was a way to... How should I put this? Basically... Take him out of the title. Mostly, but that's basically what it is. Excuse me, yeah. That's mostly exactly what the purpose of him... When Dick got protocols, he left the company and returned to the EC afterwards. Now... Before I continue on to the next tray, which will be Cable Classic... I have to talk about something related to Fabian the Caesar. Rob Liefeld, I mentioned to him on his what on his whatnot scene that I had met him. According to Rob Liefeld, he called Fabian the Caesar a hack writer. And also he decided to what really had him basically try to be, let's just say, uh, not just basically just just have a falling out with him was due to a very negative comment he made about Frank Miller. Yes, he said something really bad about Frank Miller that felt, from his perspective, felt very insulting to him. And according to him, he wants nothing to do with Fabian this season anymore. This is according to Rob Liefeld. I, Rob, if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you somehow get, get, get short of this, basically I'm just repeating what you said in your whatnot stream. Okay, uh, if somehow I misinterpret exactly what you said, I apologize. But basically, this is what you mentioned in your stream. All right, um, but I don't know how in the world that Rob Liefeld thinks of him like that. But the one thing that he, I'm not sure exactly have how. He, of course, he has the right stuff that basically Rob doesn't like anymore. I mean, they, these two probably were close at some point, but I don't think it was just because of the Frank Miller comment. I think it's because of other stuff. These these two probably have falling out at some point. I didn't ask Rob about that at all on his whatnot stream because he is not there to answer questions. He's here to have a conversation, not basically to ask questions. He wanted he wanted to have to answer questions, interview him. That's basically what he's there for. Also, if he needs any questions for him, listen to his. His 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 podcast, re, 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 Rob Observations with with Rob Liefeld. That's kind of in the way, basically, the point to there. 
Now, I do enjoy Fabian Caesar's work. I've never had an issue with his work at all. If Liefeld says he doesn't like some of the stuff he does, fine. It's his opinion. He has a right to his opinion. It's freedom of speech. Okay, so, moving on from that. Also, with this particular trade here, I am done viewing Thunderbolts for now. Yep, I've concluded my series of st my time reviewing Thunderbolts. Yeah, Thunderbolts is done. Well, until whenever they release the uh, the most recent volume for the series in trade, except the group is not called Thunderbolts. It's a team of characters related to the Colin Kelly Jackson Loring run. Yeah. Marvel. Why the heck would you release a Thunderbolts title and you will call your team Thunderbolts in the damn book? Makes no sense. Okay, moving on to Cable Classic. Volume 3. Now, I did this one. I do have a trade card for. Yeah, Cable Classic Volume 3, which collects issues of Cable Volume 1, issues 15 to 20, and Wolverine Volume 2, number 85. 16 and Wolverine 85, not going to discuss the issues because, well, I have already discussed these already, thanks to, of course, the stuff related to the generation, the, the Phalanx crossover. Yep. Issue 15, this actually was the first issue done by Jeff Loeb. Yep, Jeff Loeb took over this title at this point in time. Yep. Now, if you're really curious, like... How long did he see this title for? Because this is the start of his run in the book. Okay, the answer to that question is that he was on the book into issue 39. And I believe this may have been his very first book he did at Marvel. I believe so. Um, I'm thinking that's the way it is. Because he also at one point did X-Force. Yep, he did X-Force as well. Yeah, at one point he was doing both books because uh, these were two titles that were... Now, Cable was not started by Liefeld. Cable, Cable was created by Liefeld, but he didn't write the title itself. Nope, never did. So, according to Liefeld, he basically took over both books these a period of time, and he wrote book, bo both books for a pretty good period of time. How long was this cable one, you might ask? Three years. X-Force? Uh, about the same period of time. Actually, like a year. Mm. Yeah, it seems... This, now, 16 was not done by him at all. No, 16 was the only issue for this run was not done by him. That was done by Larry Hama, who was the writer of Wolverine at this point in time. Mostly put it just, well, Cable dealing with Matt Kell Rasputin. Some of you might be asking, Nick, who is Matt Kell Rasputin? He's Colossus' brother. Really? Colossus is a brother? Yeah, and he's a dick. I am not kidding about that. Matt Kell Rasputin is a freaking dick. I like his sister, who's a pretty decent person. Not the case of Mikhail Rasputin, who sadly got killed off very recently in the pages of X-Force. Yeah, he's always been a dick for years, I believe. But, but after skipping the issue, then we move on to Cable 17. Which, uh, they also changed the format of the cover of the book. I have to mention this here because uh, the title itself does change. A bit um, because here's the cover for uh, issue number 15 yeah it's in the book here too yeah that's what they had for the first 15 issues of the book uh, actually was the first 16 issues and at the beginning of issue uh, 17 the very next issue and the first regular issue that Jeff Flo would write after the fill in with the the, the fan like stuff they changed the the the, the corner thing which, this is something that's just like in all the x book pub period of time. So, of course, basically, they would do this. This will all start up the Dark Rider story arc. 
and also has Cable working with the X-Men Domino to feel who this Mr. Tyler is. Who turns out to be his own adopted son? Yep. The Dark Riders were actually a, a characters debuting in the pages of X, X Factor. And this is kind of the return. Yeah, they return in this book after last appearing in in X-Men Volume 2, number 23. Yeah, they appear for this quick three-part story arc. Yeah, where they revealed that Genesis is actually, well, Cable's son. He was also with Mr. Talibur. Yep. Yeah, he, he the first time Talibur appeared in the in comics was actually issue 5 X-Force. Here becomes Genesis, where he's like this evil person, where he's like tormenting his own adoptive father. Yes, seriously. And then 2021, I, I'll i briefly discuss these issues. These are basically part of the Legion Quest stuff. Legion Quest was the brief mini-crossover that the Marvel the X-Men had uh, just prior to the events of Age of Apocalypse. That's mostly put exactly what it is. It's only one issue, and that's it. And I think, yeah, basically 20 was the last issue. But, yeah, uh, these issues are actually really good. I thoroughly enjoyed this trade. Yep. Not a bad issue here. I think Jeff Loeb did an excellent job with this. And I'll be reviewing his run for this to this point forward. Uh, in a series of three trades. Yep, three trades. Now, of course, he was saying the book in issue 39. Who would take over right after we leave? Todd Dezenko. Yep, he's the one to go with the book. Now, I'm looking forward to viewing the rest of this run. Now, of course, at that point, they do change the logo. Yeah, why am I obsessed with talking about, like, logo or whatever? Because I think this is almost a cool concept. I like, like, some books nowadays that brought that concept back. But, I love this. Oh, we also have Caliban here is in this book, too, which we'll talk more about him in the future. But, yeah, Dark Rare Saga was really good here. Excuse me. Me. And I'm going to get the very first trade that collect issues from Jeff Loeb's cable book. A 9 out of 10. It was really good. Uh, not perfect, but really good. I thoroughly enjoy this. Yep. You ever think he keeps saying you thoroughly enjoy this? I really do. I that, that, that That's honest. Pure honesty. I do enjoy reading this stuff. Yep. So, yes. That's be pretty much it of you. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow, which I might have a comic corner to, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty much the next few days, you're probably going to get nothing but comic corners. Unless, of course, I get, um, I get to the chance to read, uh, unless, of course, it's a new anime. That's pretty much what's going to happen the next few days. Probably just comic corners, okay? Or, or if, in fact, that Embrace and Shadow comes back. If that comes back, it depends on when I read the next few books, okay? So, bye.